Thank you, Jimmy. Praise God. We welcome you all to the Odyssey Church, and uh, we're so glad that you're here on this uh, Gaudete Sunday. Uh, Gaudete is derived from the Latin, and it means to rejoice. So our theme today is joy. And I think most of you know who I am. I'm Rob Welsh. I'm the lead pastor here. Somebody told me to use the term senior pastor, but the older I get, I like lead a whole lot better now. Uh, but it's great to see so many familiar faces. And some of you are, are brand new here, and we just want to thank you for coming this morning. And uh, I know a lot of you have come for a great big helping of rice cream. We'll get to that in just a little while. But uh, I think you're going to find that we have a great team of people here. We have a bunch of people that just love Jesus. And we're just like you. We have some hard times, and we have some good times. But we follow the one that can give us complete joy. We follow the one who came to die so that we could live. So this isn't about a, a church like a little C. It's about a church with a big C. We are part of the body of Christ. We are part of the church. Our job is not just to stay in, but to go out and to do. So we just appreciate you. If you're new here, you're here for the first time, there's some cards in here, some uh, connection cards. We would ask you if you would, please put your name and your address, your email address, the best number to reach you out. And I promise you that's not so we can send you a bunch of emails. It's not so that we can overwhelm you with mailings. It's not for any of that. I've been in church for a long time, and I say this often. One of the biggest complaints I get in churches is people don't know how to connect to other people in the churches. And we just want to be able to tell you some of the things that are going on in our church uh, so that we can help you get connected and see if there's maybe a place you want to hang out a little bit with. Or maybe there's an event coming up, like on December the 27th. We're having a concert here. We welcome you all to come back. And uh, some of you may want to come out and bring your friends. It's free. They're not even going to be a love offering that's taken. It's absolutely free. We just want you to come out and worship with us and enjoy it uh, a little bit of what Christ has done for us in music and song. We appreciate you, we love you, we're glad you're here. Uh, for those of you that are new, uh, again, I think you'll find that the people here just simply love to follow Jesus and love his, his people and his children. In a few minutes, when we, ever after we take the offering, we have some children uh, in the back, and I say children, they're teenagers, please forgive me, because I know they don't like that, but, but we'll be able to uh, have some place if you want to take your kids, they're welcome to stay here with us as well. So we welcome you, we thank you. Scripture tells us that uh, children are, are just a blessing from the Lord. So today we have we have a, a youth day here. We have some youth. And every week we've been doing a, a lighting of the Advent canon, explaining a little bit of what we celebrate this year, or this time of year. This time of year as we celebrate not just the first Advent of Christ coming, not just the preparation of his return, his second coming, but the Christ that lives in us every day. I'm going to ask my daughter Taylor to come up and light the candles and tell us a little bit about that. On those connection cards, if you will, uh, as the uh, baskets pass around during the army, you can put them in there, or there's another basket right by the door, you can drop them off. And I do want to say one other thing. There are some Bibles up there by the front door. Uh, they are the New Living Translation, which I normally speak out. They are free. If you would like to take one, if you'd like to have a Bible, please take one on your way out. I don't you normally know, let her play with fire. <laughs> Today is the third Sunday of Advent, the celebration of the first Advent, the first arrival of Jesus Christ over 2,000 years ago. Advent means arrival. The season declares, it announces, it proclaims the coming of Christ whose birth we're preparing to celebrate once again, and whose return and final victory we anticipate. We live in the already, but not yet. We know Christ has come in his first advent. His birth is what we celebrate this time of year. We believe and look forward to his return, his second advent. So we live in the, in, we live in the between the times. A time of expectation, a time of preparation, a time of anticipation, a time of longing. But we forget sometimes Christ comes to us continually, in both word and in his spirit. But only as Christ comes, and not only will Christ come again, but he, his pres but he, he is present in this church and in the world today. The first week of Advent, we lit the candle of peace. Jesus comes to bring peace to both the world and to his people's hearts. Without Christ, there's no peace in this world or in the next world. Isaiah declared that the Son of God, the Son would be called, 
Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. It's no wonder the Jewish nation waited with such, an such anticipation for the Messiah. The Christ child came to be exactly what we need. We need a Wonderful Counselor. We need an Eternal Father, and we need a Mighty God, and we need the Prince of Peace. Living in those who have repented of their sins, believed in their hearts, and confessed his name, and confessed his name. We were once in darkness, living for only the temporary things of this world. But now we live in his light. The prophet Isaiah reminds us, the people living in darkness have seen a great light. We now live in the hope of the eternal glory of God. On this third Sunday of Advent, as we think about the coming of Jesus Christ, we light the candle of joy. When Christ comes into our lives, he brings the fullness of joy. He anoints our hearts with the oil of gladness. When Jesus was born, the angels said that his coming was good news of great joy for all people. Luke records in his gospel, chapter 2, verse 10, Don't be afraid, the angel said. I bring you good noise that will bring great joy to all people. Because Christ has come to us, we can live every day in the joy of the Lord. Praise to his name. Praise to his name. We now stand with me as we sing a couple of songs. The words are in your bulletin. Hey, Ashley, can I thank you once again? And uh, just a few minutes, we're going to take our, our love offering or take our morning offering. And I want to remind you, if you're a guest here today, uh, please just pass the bucket. We, uh, we don't expect you to give this morning, but we do thank you for coming. And first of all, I think it, it's, it's owed to those, especially those that come every week, where our money goes. So the first thing I want to tell you is where it does not go. Uh, we have no paid staff here. No one, on, no one's on payroll. Uh, even the pastor doesn't get a salary at this point in time, and that was purposeful because um, as much as you love sitting in cold metal chairs first thing in the morning, uh, we want to try to build the church and do the things necessary to 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 really be a welcoming church. So. The, the first year, we are just trying to do everything we can through the, the many blessings of people outside our church, the many blessings of the people inside our church. Uh, we are really, really close to getting the chairs. In fact, we are only about $500 away from being able to get the chairs that we want here. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot, but when, when we've been working so hard in just this new church plant, it's been amazing to watch what God has done in our midst. So, uh, other things that we have been able and we have been blessed uh, to give some Bibles out to some people that, uh, that wanted them and needed them. And we've been able to help some families with uh, Christmas. We've been able to help a uh, family get some clothes for their children. We've been able to help some, a, a mission trip to Haiti. To Haiti. We helped Taylor go to Costa Rica. We are helping another church plant. So I just want to let you know that through the things that have taken place here, that there really are lives beginning to change. And we appreciate you and we love you so much and we thank you because you are the hands and feet of God in the world. And, and I just love God's word. Sometimes we, we read his word and we hear that God loves a, a cheerful giver and, and, and we hear the interpretation, but the, the word actually comes as translated as the word hilarious, which means uh, God loves a hilarious giver. He wants us to have joy in our heart. He wants us to be happy. And that's the theme of today. So God loves a, a hilarious giver, a giver who joyfully, laughingly, and with a merry heart. So if I can get a couple ushers, we'll take this morning's offering, and we'll start to prepare our hearts for the message as well.
So often we sort of get that backwards, don't we? I, I, I told you today it's sort of like youth day here at the church. And I know many of you came out here. Uh, I want to introduce one of my favorite people in the world, uh, Bryce Wharton. Bryce is our music leader here. He does a wonderful, wonderful job. And I'm so grateful. So through the season of Advent, we've had a couple of different speakers that have come up and able to, to speak. This week, it's my honor, it's my privilege to ask Bryce Wharton to come up and give us a message today. comes from the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. And it's on the screen if you want to follow along. It uh, says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. This is the Lord of the Lord. Well, Christmas time is here. It's a very joyous time of year indeed. I, I love Christmas a lot. I've always loved Christmas, and I've, I love so many things about Christmas. I love music, much to uh, Pastor Rob's delight. I love, I love the family who comes from far away just to visit. I love decorating the Christmas tree as a child growing up. I love you know Christmas lights and decorations. I have to go to the Winter Festive Lights every year. It's a tradition for me. And I, the best part of all, I love having no school, all for two weeks. And now that I'm in college, I have a month off, so I can't complain about that. I love the Santa visits to church. I love the Christmas Eve services at church growing up. They had so much meaning to me even as a child. But of course, last but not least, presents. <laughs> this idea that I'm receiving free gifts because I'm good, which is often debatable with having siblings in the house. Conflict was always going on, especially with my older brother. Um, I remember the night before, um, or the night before uh, Chris, Christmas morning, after the Christmas Eve service, he'll come home, we'll coordinate a meeting with the siblings, and he would, um, he would ask us, you know, hey, all right, so what time are we wake up, waking up in the morning? And, um, you know, years ago it would be 6 in the morning, but now it's looking to be more 6.30 to 7 in the morning now these days, I'm all grown up. And he would wake us up. Um, wake us up in the morning and, you know, it'd be the only one day of the year that I actually would eagerly jump out of bed at 6 in the morning. <laughs> my father would make us wait up the top of the stairs and he would ru run down the stairs to check and make sure that Santa Claus isn't still down there and to make sure the presents were there. When really he was just trying to get the video camera ready. And I remember just the, um, the anticipation of just standing at the top of the stairwell waiting to come down just for him to film us and sit down and get ready to open gifts in the morning. And he still does this. <laughs> overall, <laughs> overall, Christmas is a time is a very joyful time of the year. I enjoy it when, it when it's time comes, but I'm really bummed out when it goes away. Reason number one is because there's, there's no more gifts to exchange. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love opening gifts, and I get plenty of joy watching others open gifts, but the fact that there's no more, it kind of bums you out. And the second one is returning to school. I mean, I should have to library on that one, right guys? I mean, come on, school, work. <laughs> It seems that once Christmas and New Year's is gone, the happy Christmassy time of year feeling goes away too. That happy feeling, and I've already mentioned it before, it's joy. Because what exactly is the definition of joy? And according to Merriam-Webster, which is my favorite, you know, preferred source of dictionary, um, the definition of joy is a feeling of great happiness, a source of cause of great happiness, something or someone that gives joy to someone. Christmas is a joyous time of the year, but it doesn't have to be the only time of year we have to have joy. It's a very fundamental part of our lives, and without it, we are stressed and unhappy. And it isn't a great overall representation of what a uh, Christian should represent. Look at Westboro. They go to military funerals and gay pride events and pick up a sign that says, God hates gays, God hates America, you're going to hell. I mean, to tell someone that our loving God and Father hates them, I mean, it makes Christianity such a turnoff to people to people who really need it too. And that's not what God, the, the God and Father I know is like at all. He only hates the sin and not the sinner. Studies also show that we are more, when we're joyful, we're also way more productive. I mean, think about it. If your boss comes up to you at work and asks you to do a task that you don't like doing so much, um, you probably won't do it with, with a very joyful heart. 
It happened to me the previous uh, night at work. Um, I work at <laughs> Yeah, I, I, for some reason, I bug you, didn't you? I decided to put my company logo in it. Um, <laughs> I work at Grotto's in Long Neck, and um, I came in, and my manager asked me if I wanted to do the dishwasher. And because the guy called out sick, and I was like, you know, I mean, I said yeah, but I was a little reluctant because, I mean, honestly, I don't like doing it a whole lot because it's really repetitive. You just stand there in your little, your little corner, you know, people bring you dishes, you just load up on the rack, you run it through, and that's just the whole process. And then you've got to run around the store. I don't like it. <laughs> but but I understand that someone had to do it, and they really needed someone to do it, so I did. And honestly, I need to work on myself at having a joyful heart to do it because Colossians 3, verses 23 to 24 says, as on the screen, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. When you have joy, you have more of you, more creativity. Joy fuels your individuality and allows you to be free and do whatever your heart desires ever so gleefully. If we don't have joy in our hearts, we're not doing what we're called to do. Amen. If we just go out into the world, to just, you know, unjoyful people just basically sounding bland like robots and stuff, telling people about Jesus, I mean, they would kind of get the concept of being a Christian is a very boring thing. I mean, can you just like imagine just sitting there talking to Jesus like, you know, not expressing any emotion at all whatsoever? I mean, you sound like a robot. I mean, I can't even fathom how to even try to do that at all. I mean, Jesus came into the world a perfect and blameless human sacrifice his life in the worst possible way in order for us to be able to go and live with him for all eternity. And that may not sound like a great thing at all. I mean, why should we be excited for someone who had to go through torture and die just on the cross? Isn't that a brutal thing? But Jesus wanted to do that. Jesus wanted for us to be able to go to heaven and live with us because of how much he loved us. So we should be joyful that we now, that we now have this way to go and live with him in heaven. So we should always, always, always be joyful. God blesses us in so many ways, it's difficult to be able to count them all. There's so much I can be joyful for. I mean, I've grown up in a Christian family. You know, I'm, I'm thankful that I've gotten to know Jesus at a very young age. I'm thankful for the members who I'm stuck with and call family. I'm thankful, I'm thankful, for, the, I'm thankful for the friends that God has thrown in my life. I mean, I'm thankful for where God has me going, even though I don't know where it is half the time. So picture this. What if you woke up the next morning only with the things you thank God for yesterday? Would you have a lot of stuff? Or even anything at all? I know I wouldn't have much, much, much to share. I want to deviate to a quick story real quick. So there was once a woman who was a Christian, and every morning when she woke up, she would stand on her front porch and praise the Lord every morning for every morning, every day, for all her joys in her life. You know, praise the Lord for the beautiful day you've given me and for my family. She would do that every single morning. Now, her neighbor was an atheist. He witnessed her doing this every morning. So, he thought to himself, I know what I'll do. What I'm going to do the next morning, I'm going to go to the grocery store really, really early, buy a whole bunch of groceries and lay it out on her front porch and wait for her to come out to praise the Lord. Wait for her to praise the Lord for the groceries. And then, when she does that, I'll jump out and reveal that God didn't do it. It was me. So he did this, and she jumped in, you know, he put the groceries there, and she walked out the next morning, saw the groceries, and praise the Lord for, praise the Lord for the day and everything that you've given me here, and thank you for the groceries. And as soon as she said that, he jumped out and said, aha, God did not bring the groceries. I did. Therefore, God didn't do that. And he, after he said this, the woman paused for a moment, and then she said, praise the Lord, not only did you give me groceries on a wonderful day, you got my neighbor to bring the groceries for me. <laughs> so, my friend, there are people out there in the world who are not joyful at all. Oh, that's the grocery side. Uh, <laughs> it's easy to lose joy. Like I said, after New Year's, you lose that Christmassy feeling, that feel-good moment with the time of the year to give and be merry. We don't have to lose that. There are ways that we can keep our joy and make sure that we remain joyful 365 days a year. The main thing we, we can do of interest is, of course, hold on, I messed up. The main thing we can do, whoa, I must have, must have done a typo, okay. The main thing we can do is, of course, keep them, keep them on top. 
That's the main thing because, you know, we all have our prized possessions, you know. Because if we keep God at number one, you know, everything else will fall through. And it's hard because, with, you know, because everyone has, you know, the, the love interest and um, everyone has, you know, their most prized possessions, which would be a nice shiny Corvette or something like that. But if you put God first, he will take care of all of your worries and your woes and allow you the freedom to have joy in him. The secret to joy is obedience. If we obey God, then we feel pretty good about it, right? I mean, you get that nice pat on the back. Hey, good job, man. You did what I told you to do. You get that really nice, good feeling when you, when you obey God. But when you don't obey Him, I mean, everyone here is sin, right? We all know that feeling of sinning. I mean, you feel pretty guilty and disappointed in yourself because you let God down. As humans, we fall daily. We must accept the fact that we will keep sinning no matter how hard we try because it's part of our nature. But what we need to learn to do is to be quick to retaliate, pray for forgiveness, and then be spiritually ready for God's next task for you. I love acronyms, so I have a little acronym for joy I want to show you. The J stands for jettison. Jettison all your regrets about your past. And in case you don't know what jettison means, it basically means to abandon as worthless to discard, to eliminate, and to get rid of. Paul says if you want to enjoy life, there are some things you've got to get rid of because they are wearing you down and overburdening your life. The Bible says to forget your regrets because that's what God does. He chooses to forgive your mistakes once they're confessed. The starting point of joy is letting go of the past. And Philippians 3.13 says, One thing I do is to forget what's behind me and do my best to reach what is before me. O stands for omit. Omit all worries about your future. If you're going to enjoy the present, you must omit all your worries about your future. I mean, worry, hands down, is the greatest kill joy of them all. You cannot be joyful and worry at the same time. Paul's antidote are these verses. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for what He has done. You can either worry about, or you can either worry or you can either pray. You cannot do both. The last thing, why, stands for yield. Yield yourself to God's purpose. If you're just drifting and you don't know where you came from or where you're going or why you're here, of course you're not going to have any joy in your life. We all need a greater cause than ourselves for which we live. That is what brings us joy. Living for yourself does not bring joy. There are a lot of people out there hurting. People commit suicide every day because they came to terms that there's nothing else to live for anymore. They came to that conclusion. Pastor Rob, in case you know you weren't here last week, last week, I was talking about a billionaire from Germany named Adolf Merkel. He was the richest <coughs> richest man in the world at one time. He had nine point two billion dollars in net worth you know, for one man. But he and his company made a bad investment, a couple bad investments over the years in the two thousand eight recession. It hurt his company, and his worth dropped from nine point two billion dollars to about 6.3. So he lost about $3.6 billion over the, course, over the course of a couple years. And he dropped from number 44 for the richest man in the world to number 96. Still, you can still live all that. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> but one January morning, he stepped out in front of a speeding train because he thought he couldn't live up that much money. I may not have known this guy personally, but I can infer that he invested his life in the wrong places. We need to go out and show that Jesus is the ultimate joy giver. I mean, he gives us a reason to live, and as Solomon said in Ecclesiastes 1, I keep stealing Rob's stuff from last week. <laughs> but um, as he says in Ecclesiastes 1, everything is meaningless. The river flows into the sea, but the sea never gets full, our eyes never get full of seeing, our ears never get full of hearing. Basically, the world is a, is a never-ending place. You'll never find satisfaction. But behold the good news. Jesus Christ has come to offer a way for us to live eternally with him, to find meaning in life. That's why we need to live for him. All of our worldly investments, including money, property, businesses, infrastructure, everything will fade away. God will always remain. That doesn't mean that God doesn't want us to go out and have fun. I mean, God gave us the air, God gave us his life. You know, God, you know, wants us to go out and enjoy his creation. Go out, you know, go bowling, hang out with friends, do all that. <laughs> it could be anything else. Just don't consume yourself with it you'll eventually be unjoyful. Are you somebody that doesn't have joy? Are you somebody that's maybe going through a financial crisis 
you're in danger of losing your home, or your marriage is on the brink of divorce, or maybe a close relative or friend of yours is dying. It's difficult to have joy in these situations, but remember, remember who's in control. There isn't anything that God cannot do. You could be in those situations so you could experience God in a totally different light. God wouldn't take anything away from you for no reason. You would never, you would never take it away from you for no reason. The outcome in the end would be very beneficial. Your life could be better. You never know what God has in store for you. If you want help to find your joy back, I would recommend reading your Bible, praying, obeying God, and even attending church. Of course, they may not be the easiest thing to do all the time. It's hard to have a commitment to read your Bible every day and to pray because it's easy to forget that with the things in the world going on. So, if you want my best recommendation of how you can really get in a joyful state, I recommend... Oh, there should be a Christmas slide. Okay, well, um, I, I recommend this, a Christian retreat. I'm very involved with a, thing, a retreat called Chrysalis. And there are actually many people here who actually I met through Chrysalis. We got Jeff, Brene, Ethan, Shannon, and Zeph. I didn't meet you guys through Chrysalis. Sorry, babe. But um, <laughs> all these people I met through Chrysalis have ended up becoming my best of friends. And I'm sure that we'll be friends to the very end. It's through Chrysalis that we learn what God did for us through the ultimate sacrifice of his son. I literally am the most joyful and emotional when it comes to that weekend. The times I feel the most joyful is when I'm on the weekend. I mean, Christmas has forever changed my output, output on life and on Christianity and all, all things. I mean, it's through, it's through Christmas that I feel God's presence very, very strongly. Every weekend's a different journey, too, and I never get tired of serving. And every, every time I get the call, I think I'll always say yes because I love it so much. If there are any, any of you guys who might be interested in that or the adult counterpart walk to Emmaus, please, please, please talk to me, talk to Rob, or talk to any of those guys back there. Because I believe they have the same output and the same feelings about the program as me. And I promise you that you will, you will get something out of it. You will. But if you don't feel the calling to go, then you don't have to go. Christmas isn't for everybody. But another thing you may need to evaluate in your Christian life is to make sure that whatever measures you're doing are allowing you to be closer to God, including the church that you're going to. If you aren't going to church in the first place, I recommend that you go. I mean, find a church that fits you and that is feeding you properly. It'll help you get closer to God if you have Christians every week. But if you go to a church and you're not getting anything out of it, you're not leaving happier or more satisfied than you were coming in, you should consider attempting to, make, to take measures to help your church so that it becomes that feeling. But if you tried your best and it doesn't work, then you should consider looking for another church. Yeah, sure, I mean, you were married in that building 50 years ago, and all your family and friends go to that church. But ultimately, it's not about that at all. If you're going to a church and not being fed, it's just as going to the first place. It's like going to the bed and not being able to get money. Oh, well, you know, they have complimentary lollipops, and they have pens, and they have both of them toilet paper in their bathrooms and stuff like that. So really cool stuff, but are all those reasons the reasons why you want to go to the bank? No. <laughs> if you don't get money, it's kind of useless and redundant to go in the first place. And if you can't get money, I would recommend switching banks. <laughs> well, yeah, come on. <laughs> when Pastor Rob... Um, to the idea. My first concept was that I was only going to help out for maybe a, a few months and then returning to my old church. But after meeting him at our famous Millsboro McDonald's meetings throughout the uh, springtime discussing plans, I found out that he wanted me on a full-time basis and to leave my church. And I'll admit, I was a little reluctant at first. I liked my old church for the youth group that was there and the people that were involved in it. And that was really the only reason I was going. I wasn't being fed the congregation wasn't very cooperative with the youth group's ideals. I mean, it was such a turnoff to me. I mean, it was a, it's a traditional church, and, you know, they would tell you to take your hat off. And I know, you know, back in the day, you know, it was a very polite thing to do to take your hat off when you entered buildings. But if somebody were to go in there, somebody younger than me, with their hat on, and they tell you to take your hat off, I mean, he will be so offended by that incident where you looked at him and you judged him and told him to take your hat off. It bothered me for some reason. 
But since we secured this place in June and have been having services since September the 7th and henceforth, I'm glad that I made the move. Even though we're not quite to our goal yet, we want to make church exciting and something that the end church would like. We're getting closer every week. With people donating stuff, a whole bunch of stuff to help us get us started. I mean, the chairs were donated, the stage was donated, the piano was donated, <laughs> it was donated. And we're so very blessed. It's, an, it's amazing to watch, even from the very beginning, back in June, to see how much this place has grown from a garage to looking more like a sanctuary. People who weren't going to church before are now going to, since our operation started, are now coming here. And it's been a joyful experience to, for me to watch this church grow. And I cannot just see, wait to see what plans and blessings that God has for the Odyssey Church in store to serve the community. I've had a pleasure being the music director here and will continue to do joyfully with a joyful heart. In closing, if you haven't been paying attention to any part of my sermon, shame on you. Um, <laughs> listen up and do not forget this. Rejoice in the Lord. And I will say it again. Rejoice in the Lord. Remember to be joyful in the name of Jesus Christ and not to let Christmas be the only time of year to be joyful. If any of you would like to discuss anything about joy or even consider Christmas or Emmaus, anything on the matter, I open myself or Pastor Rob, and of course he would know more scripture or anything than I would, so I would recommend him first to be available to talk to you after the service. And I can try to help you out with anything that we need. He can try to help you out with anything that we need. Let us pray. Dear God, I'm thankful for all the people that came out here tonight. I ask that you lift up their hearts and teach them how to be joyful, not just during Christmas time, but throughout our whole year. I pray, God, as we all depart this place, that you keep, give us safe travel mercies as we all return back to the places that we go. And I pray this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, may you all go out and be joyful and merry all year round. Have safe travels as you leave here, and hope to see you guys soon. A lot of thanks. It's been said that you can't be a success without a successor. So what, what pleases me the most is to know if, if something did happen to me on the way home, if I'm not able to be here, I, I know we have a great team of people, and the local church, the Odyssey Church, will continue to go on. Uh, I want to let you out of here in just a few minutes. I, I, I don't want to jettison you out of here. But I don't want to omit anything either, so I'm going to yield and I'm going to tell you about a couple of upcoming events. Um, Thursday nights, we have movie nights here. We welcome you to come out at 7 o'clock. We're going to watch a movie done by City, City on the Hill. You may not be familiar with it. It's called The Christian Experience. Uh, I have not seen it, but I have read the reviews. It's supposed to be amazing, so we welcome you all to come back out to that. Next... Uh, Next Sunday, which by the way is the last Sunday before Christmas, not to scare any of you, uh, and for some of us who have not even started Christmas shopping yet, that it's a little bit fearful, uh, we will have Joyce Igo in concert. If you've never seen Joyce Igo, she's a wonderful, wonderful speaker. She is funny. She is talented musically. She will sing. She will give the word. Uh, I'm really looking forward to her. She's also part of an international ministry that the Odyssey Church is part of called Victory Fellowship, and she'll tell you a little bit about that next week as well. And then Saturday, 27th, right after Christmas, we have our very first of, uh, big event here. Uh, we have our Christmas carol, uh, Christmas service, uh, Christmas carol service, and Bryce has headed that up, so we welcome you to come back that as well. Uh, Jennifer Wheelman, or Wellman, our church secretary, has been a big part of that. They have got a group of musicians from around the area, and I, I'm really, really, really excited about it because this is the first event I told them to do, and I don't have a clue what they're doing there. It's all going to be as much a surprise to me as it will be to you that day. And then on December 28th, we have a very special service, special message, I believe, called a baby change to everything. So if you don't have a local church, and I know some of you come a long distance, but if you don't have a local church, we don't want to be a, a church that takes people out of other churches, but if you don't have a local church, we would ask you to come back and at least consider the Odyssey Church, not as, as a local gathering of followers of Christ. We appreciate you coming. We thank you for coming today. May the Lord bless you. May we remember that this is a season of peace and hope and joy and love. Let me pray for you.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for everyone who come out. Lord, we thank you for your anointing upon Bryce, and we thank you for the many talents that you've given him and the other members that you brought here to the Odyssey Church. Father, let us be your hands and feet at earth, not as the little C church, but as the big C church, as the body of Christ. Father, let us go in the peace and love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you again for coming. God bless you. Y'all have a great day.